hey everyone welcome back to my channel so one of you guys asked me about uh, to make a video on enzyme kinetics after watching the pharmacokinetics video so here you go i know how confusing km and vmax can be but hopefully by the end of this video um, i can make it clear for you so i want you to think with me um, a simple experiment uh, if we have uh, four enzyme molecules and we have two substrates, substrate A and substrate B. And we want to find out which substrate has higher affinity for the enzyme uh, than the other. Okay, So we're going to start with, stru with substrate A and we're going to keep adding molecules and see if it uh, can fit the enzyme. Uh, enzymes active site so I added one molecule here it didn't fit I added another one it didn't fit I added this one yes it did and I added the other one yes it did which means that half the enzymes active sites were occupied at concentration of four so substrate A has a KM of four and that represents the concentration at which half the enzymes active sites are saturated. Now let's take a look at substrate B. Now add one molecule of substrate B and yes it fit. Added another molecule, yes it fit. And so at only a concentration of two, substrate B was able to half saturate the enzymes active sites. What do you think is the substrate with the higher affinity in this case? Obviously, it's substrate B, because at such a low concentration of 2, it was able to saturate half the enzyme's active sites. And that is what we mean by Km. Therefore, Km is all about the substrate. It's the substrate concentration at which half the enzyme's active sites are uh, saturated okay at this point because half the enzymes active sites are saturated the enzyme is operating at its at half capacity okay therefore half the Vmax now in order to understand this better I'm gonna start explaining what the Vmax is so imagine if all the enzymes active sites were saturated so we filled it up uh, we filled up all the active sites with a substrate and now at this point substrate concentration is no longer a factor because we already have enough substrate and so it's no longer a factor that influences enzyme activity anymore at this point because the enzyme is fully saturated now we are waiting for the enzyme to work so at this point it is the enzyme's activity and velocity or rate that matters. And this is actually the point at which we, the, well, the point which we, so at this point, for example, where we have enough substrate and uh, nothing is like, it's not about substrate availability anymore. Um, here we are waiting for the enzyme to work and that is therefore determined by the velocity of the enzyme, hence called Vmax, that is the velocity at which uh, the max, there is maximum saturation of enzymes active sites. At this point, no matter how much substrate you keep adding, it's the same because this enzyme has reached its maximum function. Okay, therefore, to summarize, Km is all about substrate affinity, but Vmax is all about enzyme activity. It's how fast the enzyme would work if given enough substrate. That is, if it's fully saturated with substrate. Now that you understand, uh, hopefully, what Km and Vmax is, um, let's take a look at the difference between competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. So competitive inhibitor affects KM and I'm going to show you now how it does that so 
Imagine here we have a reaction, an enzyme with an active site, and we have a substrate that is able to fit this active site in order to produce product. So in order to produce product, the substrate has to fit the same active site as the enzyme. Now imagine if another substrate comes in and it's also able to fit the active site. This is therefore a competitor. Hence we call it competitive inhibition. It competes with the substrate for the same active site, which means that the substrate ha concentration has to increase so much in order to push it away and bind instead of it, which means that the substrate concentration has to increase to achieve the same level of product and achieve the same Vmax. Because we increased substrate concentration so much in order to push the competitor, therefore the Km goes up. Because as I told you, Km is substrate concentration. It represents affinity of the substrate. So that's about competitive inhibition. But because we never changed the enzyme's function or velocity, it's just two people are competing for the same place but the place is there untouched therefore the Vmax is unchanged we just take a longer time to reach it because of another competitor with non-competitive inhibition on the other hand it affects Vmax because it affects enzyme function so it's the same analogy we have a substrate and we have an enzyme and they produce a product but there comes in a, a, an inhibitor that is non-competitive that changes the enzyme's function. It changes the ability of the enzyme to work on the substrate at hand, on the original substrate. So the substrate can no longer bind, can no longer fit. So no matter how much substrate you add, that will never push the enzyme activity because the enzyme is changed. It will no longer work, no matter how much product you add. Therefore, this is the curve for non-competitive inhibition. No matter how much I add substrate, the Vmax will never reach the top because and the, some enzymes were changed and therefore it's not operating at full capacity. So let's do a question to reinforce that. So here's a U-world question. In an experiment investigating vasoconstriction of the arterial wall, two samples of isolated porcine arterial vessels are studied. So we are trying an experiment on a, a control and another one with an inhibitor. Vascular tone is measured in the control vessel during infusion of increasing doses of norepinephrine. As you can see on the x-axis, norepinephrine is our substrate and vascular tone is the enzyme's function or we can also consider it activity. The other vessel is pre-treated with experimental drug A prior to infusion of norepinephrine. And here's the graph. As you can see, this graph looks a lot similar to that with non-competitive inhibition which means the drug A is a non-competitive inhibitor of norepinephrine. Now, if you take a look at the control group, when the more you add norepinephrine, the more you add substrate, the more the vascular tone, until a certain point when it no longer depends on concentration of norepinephrine, rather on the activity of the vessel or whatever and that's called Vmax you've already reached maximum capacity now here as well with drug A the more you add norepinephrine also the higher the vascular tone until a certain point but at this certain point the Vmax is lower than without drug A which means that drug A is non-competitive or is irreversible. It completely changed the activity of the receptor, of the alpha receptor, so that it no longer works at all. So the question is essentially asking, what is the non-competitive inhibitor or irreversible inhibitor 
of norepinephrine. That's what the question wants. So let's see here. Atropine is an anticholinergic drug, so it doesn't apply here. Labetalol is a beta blocker, doesn't apply here. Phenoxybenzamine, yes, this is a um, an irreversible alpha antagonist that is used for few chromocytoma. So this is correct. It completely inactivates the alpha receptor, so that it wouldn't work again no matter how much norepinephrine you add. And it is therefore fitting to treat pheochromocytoma, uh, which is a tumor that releases so much uncontrollable norepinephrine. Phentolamine is also an alpha antagonist, but it is reversible or it's competitive, which means you can still push it away by adding more substrate. And propranolol is a beta blocker, so it doesn't apply here. So I hope that makes sense. And thank you, everyone, for watching.